yet, and yet, the gentleman makes uncomfortably good sense. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, the government, where, 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 
again, growing up, because we lived in the free country, and it was the British that were the socialists. And I remember the times when you'd, you'd see the conservatives come to power, and they say, aha, now's the time to sell businesses, government businesses. And, and here, they sold off more, and we've been adding them. You know, yeah, we, yeah. we nationalize everything. This is a nationalized railroad. It's a total failure. And while we do it, we ought to just stick it. When we sell Amtrak, we ought to legalize the delivery of first-class mail, too. Yeah. <laughs> and in this room there are probably uh, many, 30 or 40 candidates. I was wondering if you could state to us what you believe should be the top three issues that we should run upon. Freedom. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I run on, I talk about two issues uh, mainly because I'm interested in monetary policy and I'm interested in international affairs. Uh, at home, I, I, what my posters say, there's only one issue that I run on, which is still always a freedom issue. And that was, that was the award the national taxpayers gave me uh, for voting for the least amount of spending in taxes. They called me the, Nash, the taxpayer's best friend. So I put everything on there, the taxpayer's best friend. So it's always taxes. Okay. And this gobbledygook about people don't want lower taxes is a bunch of nonsense. People want lower taxes. It's running on taxes, less government. It's always a freedom issue and, and, and putting it into a particular issue. I have to deal with the freedom issue in my district. I have 22 counties, all farming, and they know I don't vote for any subsidies. So I have to talk about real freedom <laughs> and why they're better off without it, without the government, and I'm able to convert them. So to me, it's the big picture and then apply it to each and any little one, depending on what your race is Thank you. all about. Dr. Paul, I followed your career for many years. I'm very happy to see you here today Thank and you. get a chance to just uh, visit with you for a moment. Uh, I'm a businessman. I've traveled all over the country, actually all over the world, from the USSR, the World Cup, et cetera. But the people in this country you may know are just sick to death of everything in Russia. So my question is, what's your opinion of the, uh, not only the, well, the Congress, House, and Senate, these people that get elected, are they so ignorant they don't even understand the Constitution or their jurisdiction? Or is it a fact that the two primary parties simply select corrupt people in the beginning to get them up there to join the rest of the corruption? What's the problem with, with the mentality of the people up there? Okay, I, I agree essentially with all your uh, assumptions there about the problem with the Congress, but I think you come up short because you haven't talked about the people who elect them. So, <laughs> it, you know, there's still a constituency out there. And, you know, if they're dumb, they're pretty smart getting elected. You know, they're getting reelected, so if it's a measurement, but what I'm trying to say is you can take a different position and still get elected too, and you don't have to lose. Some of them are, are uh, ignorant, some of them don't care, but they think and die power and reelection. Thank you. I mean, that's what motivates you. One last question. Okay. Well, uh, so Dr. Paul, there's a campaign to uh, nominate you for U.S. Senate from Texas. Are you going to run for U.S. Senate? I am not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was, uh, was an effort. The time has passed. And uh, to do that, I would have had to raise 12 to $15 million. And uh, the Republican primary, the person running, doesn't look like a strong candidate at all. But he would have had the money. Now, I overcame the, uh, the power and the influence of the Republican Party in the primary in a district, which meant that with hard work and effort and door knocking and the things that we had to do, we could overcome it. But I couldn't do that in the state of Texas. It would be very difficult. So to me, it was a choice of whether I should continue to uh, plot along with what I'm doing versus taking a gamble and quite frankly uh, from my viewpoint of what I'm trying to do I can probably have almost as much influence because I'm not there influencing that legislation I'm not in that debate my debate is out here someplace and whether I'm in the Senate or in the House I don't think uh, the people in the country who are sick of it all care that much as long as there's somebody there that's saying what they like to hear. Thank you very much.